terrorized the nation, whether through a fairy tale marriage, her children, her life in the tabloids, and now speaking out on behalf of the mental health associations, Margot Trudeau has come to St. John's to deliver a speech to the mental health association here at the fundraiser, but she's been good enough to give us some time on Out of the Fog. Ms. Trudeau. Fabulous to meet you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Patty. May I call you Margaret? Please do. Margaret, you're here in town speaking on behalf of the Mental Health Association as an advocate. Yeah. And what are you advocating when you speak to the crowd tonight? Well, I, I sort of the working title that I work with is called Choosing Sanity because um, there's one out of four of us now at some point during our life as can adult Canadians will um, run into some kind of mental distress. Uh, something in life, whether it's uh, a loss of a loved one or a failed marriage or losing a job, will get knocked over. And it's how you stand up again that really is the mark. And many of us um, can't stand up on our own. We think we can, and we just uh, can't. Only a third of people who suffer from depression in Canada ever get any treatment. And the truth is that within a couple of weeks, uh, you can feel so much better because it's a, physio a physiological disease as well. You know, we just think of mental illness as just being something in the mind that ca we can't do anything about, that we don't understand. Whereas, in fact, all the research is showing that it, there's a, a great deal involved in the chemical imbalance in people's brains mm -hmm. that ca that's caused by stress, that's caused by life, and who knows, might be even caused by pollution. But, in fact, it can be corrected, and you can live a wonderful, happy, healthy, whole life in spite of the fact that you've gone through uh, problems with mental imbalance. I'm not sure if it's uh, on purpose or by coincidence the obstacles you mentioned, the loss of a loved one or a troubled marriage, could be the obstacles that, you know, lead you to find out that you do indeed have a mental illness that you need to uh, investigate and to treat. Yeah. But I'm sure the viewers at home are thinking, boy, Patty, you've got Margaret Trudeau here. You ne really need to talk about your life because you, <laughs> know, you really did indeed, based on the obstacles you just highlighted, had a very interesting life, a very well, colorful I've, public life. I've had a public life. I've had uh, deep sorrow in my life. I've had great joy. Um, I've raised five beautiful children, healthy children. Um, the loss of my son was, of course, um, a turning point, a devastating turning point in my life. Um, failed marriages, uh, but that can be um, different for different reasons. There isn't one simple explanation why mm -hmm. marriage hasn't worked for me, um, except that uh, a lot of people who suffer from bipolar, as I do, uh, have failed marriages um, when they're untreated, because it's really hard to be on the roller coaster. Uh, all the time for the people around you, the people who love you. Um, some, you know, for the most part, it's depression, uh, but then you can get lifted up into quite a euphoric, manic kind of state and uh, and act without thinking about the consequences. It's called impaired insight, and it and that's the sort of the most dangerous part of bipolar, certainly for me. Uh, the depression is just, just debilitating because you lose your interest in life. You live in a gray zone where nothing piques your interest. Nothing. You have no desire, no, no fun. You don't laugh at jokes. You don't smile at sunsets. You don't. You lose your zest. And depression is debilitating. And uh, quite a lot of us suffer from depression and never seek any treatment. And I hadn't sought treatment until it was really forced on me after the death of... Uh, Michelle, and then followed by the death of his father, Pierre, I, I couldn't get up off the ground anymore. I just couldn't, and I needed help, and I had to get help. Um, in our health care system, in order to get the help that you need, sometimes you have to be, well, most of the time you have to be in serious crisis, and you are either considered a danger to yourself or to someone else. I don't think I fit either of those, perhaps a danger to myself, because I wasn't functioning anymore but I wasn't being able to take care of myself. But um, that's when I got the serious help. What I'm trying to advocate is get it early. I could have avoided so much pain for myself and my family had I accepted early on that I um, had a mental condition that needed to be treated. And had I just accepted that, my life might have been quite different. I have no regrets because my life is so wonderful right now. It is, and so interesting. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about, of course, your first marriage to Pierre. You met him when yeah. you were such a young girl. Yes. And, of course, your public life starts maybe a little bit earlier than that. You're the daughter of an MP, James Sinclair, who was a member of Parliament. And yes. when you first 
met uh, the eventual Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. You're only young girl, 18 years old, on holidays um, in Tahiti, right? Is that right, how it goes? We met on a lagoon. No love interest there on my part. I was interested in the water skiing instructor. Uh -huh. uh, he was young, but Pierre uh, caught my attention because he was just such an interesting uh, man. We sat and talked for hours and hours. Uh, I was too young to think of him romantically, but he did say at that time if ever he was to marry, he was looking down the table at the club med, the breakfast table, he said, she's the one. So he kind of picked me then, but it took me a few years to finish university and get back and uh, start my career, which didn't last very long before we were married. I have no regrets about my marriage because I've got three most beautiful children. Uh, our, my, our sons are just wonderful children, have been uh, young men now. Um, I no regrets except that 29 years is way too much of an age difference. It's just too many generations different. In case in point, a mm -hmm. quote from you based on your mm -hmm. first meeting with Pierre and conversation, your mother says, do you know who you were talking to for those three hours? And you say, Pierre something or other. Something or other. So, she I mean, said, the black sheep of the Liberal Party. Right. Yeah, I know I didn't know who he was. And I didn't like the public persona. I didn't like the... So we never had why we were a surprise. Our marriage was a surprise to the country was that they didn't know me because I wouldn't go out with him publicly. I went out once or twice and just found uh, the people didn't behave nicely toward it. Well, not nicely, that they were so awestruck being with the Prime Minister that they lost their conversation. Mm -hmm. they, and he, we'd walk up to a group that were laughing and telling jokes and the jokes would stop and they'd get sort of all pretentious and I, I found it very difficult to be real. And I was quite a, a young free spirit then, if you say even a hippie. And I, I, liked, I liked my life real, not fake. And I found that there, that made an artificial kind of artificial intimacy or conversation, dialogues with people. So I, we just kept our relationship private. So it was, I wasn't really ready for the political um, maelstrom that came with it. Um, it was, it was difficult. I, I, my life as Pierre's wife, um, it, more difficult because of postpartum depression, which triggered my bipolar, uh, or that was the beginning of my bipolar. Was, uh, and I think that we have to be really conscious of our young mums and uh, watch them carefully and, and help them uh, be able to express how they feel honestly because um, you're supposed to be just so happy when you have a baby and all your dreams have come true. Uh, but the reality is a lot of mums are totally overwhelmed and they, they lose it mm -hmm. and they, they lose their balance and they can become very, very ill and they can hurt themselves or their babies. And, and so it's something that you have to be very... Um, aware of, and I think doctors are, I think obstetricians are, I think uh, we are now, certainly. I have two, two beautiful uh, young women in my life who are giving me grandchildren, and, uh, and you know, they know that we're there to support them if they, if they have, have mixed emotions once the baby comes. It's, it's, it's a real thing, postpartum depression, and it's something that has to be treated. Most mental imbalances, most mental health um, issues um, can be treated, and you can get relief from the suffering and the pain. You were, just were you have to reach out. in your life at 24 Sussex? Because I know you just said you want things real because as you know, as a flower child or a free <laughs> spirit, then of course life in 24 Sussex is it was very calculated lonely. and lonely. It was very lonely. I was isolated from my family and friends. Of course, I grew up on the West Coast. And I, I had a lot of uh, responsibilities, such as writing about a hundred thank you notes every day. And I just, I, I, and no help. I wasn't, um, I think, the new prime minister's wife has an office and a mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I had no such thing. I had nobody to, to help me with, with my responsibilities or even to guide me. And Pierre just wanted me at home with the children. But I found there was a role that was expected of me, and I didn't know how to fulfill it. I I didn't know um, how to do it, um, but I didn't really want to do it. I wanted to be home with my children. I wanted to cook for them, and I, I even wanted to clean and iron. Those are kinds. I'm a Virgo. I kind of like doing household chores that I find very therapeutic. And I was isolated from even being able to to do that to take care of my children. 
So uh, it was when I, I finally started getting happy when I got a little red brick house three blocks away from 24 Sussex, just a, an unassuming house on a quiet street where I had my own kitchen and the boys had real life instead of, um, I call, I sometimes call the uh, Prime Minister's residence the crown jewel of the federal penitentiary system because it kind of is like a prison.